pistol. Show up to church, and in your flesh, you just don't feel like doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. I'm going to give y'all a, a big admission tonight. I got overheated back two or three days back, and I, I hadn't felt the same since. I don't feel real strong, don't feel real anything. Except I know he's worthy. Right. right. Amen. 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 I think if we could just get in our mind, this might be a test just for me primarily, but if it'll help you, I hope it does. But I'm going to make sure I praise him tonight extra. Yeah. Right. Because my flesh says no. Just a little bit, Brother John Gum's going to be preaching to us. I'm excited about it, and uh, he's going to—he's going to bring the word he's been preparing for, and the Lord's going to do a great thing. Hallelujah. But I wish, without the beat of a drum, without the bass guitar, I wish we could just lift our hands right now. Every man, woman, boy, and girl. You can look across this platform. You see half of the folks that are up here usually are gone. There's some are traveling and uh, others had to work late and what have you. You can look around the room and a lot of Wednesday night folks are not here. But we don't come because of the people. Come on. That's right. We don't come because of the preacher. Come on. We don't become because of the we don't come because of the songs. All that's a part of it. But we come because this is his house. Amen. I wish without any of those things, I wish we could just begin to have a testimony service for the next little bit. Come on, just thank him. Has he saved you? Has he healed you? Has he turned your life around? Has he blessed you? Why don't you just begin to thank him for those things? Lord John was lost. He was still looking for him. some traveling, some vacation, and uh, my wife and I might be gone a day or two. We should be back Sunday tomorrow. She's been putting up with me 27 years tomorrow. Savior. Lord, you're the only one. There's none like you. There's none beside you. None before you. There'll be none after you. 
Lord, you see every name and what it represents. You see every hope. You see every doubt, every fear. Lord, you see every person that's been challenged with depression and spiritual oppression, Lord. Lord, people that are in fear right now, we just ask you to come against that right now, Lord. Raise that flag up for our nation. That's all of our elected officials. No matter who they are or what they believe, your touch makes the difference. We just ask you to do that. We believe in that. We're expecting that. We receive that right now. Your perfect, matchless name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You can consider it if you want to. You'll probably be standing on that next song anyhow. But remember, we're not going to come uh, take your offering. We used to always say we're going to come take up an offering. Some folks got smart and started saying receive. But takes it sounds like a, a, an indoor hijack. <laughs> so what we started doing, and uh, we're going to continue to do this and, unless we see a negative change. We don't want anybody that can't give when a band comes by to feel any kind of way. We don't want anybody to feel pressure. And folks always give on, online. A lot of folks do anyway. And so uh, we got to just kind of go with the times. But it doesn't mean to quit giving. We're going to have a couple of ushers at the end of service. The Bible teaches about giving with a joyful heart. And those that want to give will give. I don't think I ought to stand up here. I don't think anybody ought to anywhere and just beg you. Right. Amen. Right. I mean that. I've been saying this for weeks. And so all of us that want to will support his kingdom. There will be an, an usher at the back. We're doing this from now on going forward. And uh, unless unless we see something needs to be done different. And uh, you know what you're doing. And, and God's God speaks to you. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. I believe that. Anybody just happy to be here? Yeah. 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 Back in the building, but it now this is gonna put your family in a, in a real bind, brother Victor. Is there anybody in this section that's just glad to be here? Just say, I'm glad to be here. What about in this section? Yeah. We used to call that the center section, and we realized there was a couple of saved ones, so we had to quit saying that. And in the middle section, just glad yeah. to be here.
setting, much less a Pentecostal apostolic setting, and then some that are uh, still still looking, still seeking, yes. still wanting to be filled. And uh, when all this happened and we couldn't have live uh, services and could only have 10 people in a room, I have to be totally transparent with you. I worried. I worried. And I said, well, you know, we have a lot of babies, a lot of young folk, a lot of folks spiritually that, you know, where will it, where will it be if it takes all that time? And I'm going to tell you, I'm not proud because I don't want to ever be too proud. But I'm honored to tell you that we've done well. Yes. And you've done well. You've kept your obligations, prayer, commitment to one another, to the church. And I just want to tell you that I love you and God honors you and it hasn't gone unnoticed. Right. Just thank you for keeping it. Thank you for keeping it. Right. Hey, thank the Lord for your brother across oh, the way. Yeah. 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 Look at here, men, the bishop almost looked like Twinkies tonight. <laughs> I look at him and copy my dress. If it is, he's the only Twinkie. <laughs> I've got an apology to God that I need to make. I told the Lord here a few weeks ago when all this sickness started, I said, Lord, if, if you just let me get back in church, I'm going to run all over that place. And I hadn't ran yet, but uh, if you'll take care of your credit, <laughs> oh, and uh, I feel a little, little more. Uh, I'm on. I'm on the run. And uh, now there's some other folks that I told that to, and they said I'm going to be right behind you. So you get ready, dude. <laughs> get ready. Get ready. Get ready. If there's any young people in here that. It's in youth age. Our young people are all over in the youth chapel. Brother Joe, they went up there a little bit ago and they got a good crew up there having a good time. And uh, so if there's any here, need to go over there where you need to get on out. <laughs> and like Brother Rusty said a little earlier, I'll be all right. Like he said a little minute ago, I am so glad to see some of you. 
was all of you folks. Nobody knows how it, how it hurts to be away from the family. And this is this is our family. Right. Amen. God bless you. Let me give it back to him before he has a stroke. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Sounds like a challenge. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, I'm just thankful God decided to use me tonight, so I'll take it any way I can get it. There you go. Brother Rusty said earlier about it doesn't matter who's preaching or the song you're singing, we're here to magnify him, right? right. Amen. And I'm willing to bet with every dime that I had that nobody showed up tonight going, man, I hope Brother John's preaching. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all definitely came for him. You didn't come for me. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like to start in Proverbs 23, verse 23. I didn't even have this verse pulled up, but sitting back there, he brought it to mind. And it fits perfectly with what I feel he wants to do and where he wants to go. Proverbs 23 and 23 says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Let's all say that. Buy the truth, Buy the truth. and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Come on, let's lift him up. Jesus, I'm thankful to God, Lord. You've been working on me, God. You've been showing me things. You're giving me this word tonight. I pray, Lord, that you speak, Jesus. I surrender to you, Lord, and everything you want to do. God, my hands be your hands. My feet be your feet. Lord, open our hearts and our minds tonight. Open our ears to hear. Not only hear, but be obedient to the word that you have to say tonight, Jesus. We love you. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. And we're going to sit back in anticipation for what you have for us tonight. Yeah. We love you and give you this hand. good test, a pretty good trial, but I feel and that's going to be a sermon I get to teach later on that won't come out, look the devil in the eye in any problem, in any situation we've been facing through this, say I'm still standing, I am. I'm still standing, but tonight we're going to teach or preach or peach or whatever we want to do. Love the truth. Love the truth. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Deuteronomy 6. I want to start reading a little bit here. It's a pretty familiar group of scriptures. It says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Rick, can you turn me down right here? Like I'm yelling at myself. Huh. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Here we go. Hear, O Israel. Everyone say, Hear. The Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Say, All thine heart. With all thy soul. Say, With all thy soul. Amen. And with all thy might. 
Amen. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Say all the time. All the time. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them on the posts of thy house and on thy gates. I'm sorry, you all may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor of the word. This is a powerful set of scriptures. This set of scripture follows throughout the entire Bible. Never lets up. Never changes mind. Never turns a different way. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. It says early on in this, it talks about fear. It says that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. Used to, I used to take this as, okay, yeah, I'm afraid. I mean, at any moment, pow, he can just take me out. I don't know what he wants to do, right? But what that means is awe or great reverence. That's saying, God, you are awesome. You did all this. When you stand outside at night and you look at the stars and you go, wow. Lord, you're so big. You're so mighty. You're so incredible. All in great reverence. That's what it's talking about. Yeah, sure. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. Keep all his statutes, his commandments. And it's good if you do that. That thy days may be prolonged. Amen? Amen. It goes on, we say, hear, O Israel. That word hear in Hebrew is shema or shema. Now, in my studies, I found that that word doesn't quite encapsulate how we see it. Sorry, doesn't quite encapsulate how the Hebrews mean it. The word here doesn't contain all that the word Shema implies in this instance. Shema is a command to listen, pay attention, and obey. So they're not just saying, hey, listen up, I got something to say. They're saying, you better pay attention right now. Because this is how we're going to live. Amen? It's strong. It's bold. Hear, O Israel. Enough said. Period. That's what he's saying here. This is how it's going to be. And love. To love the Lord with all my heart. Here's where it started bringing me in. Love means to be deeply committed and connected to someone or something. Love is not a noun. Love is a verb. Love is an action word. Yeah, right. To just say I love you and move on isn't quite what that means. I can tell my wife all day long I love you, babe, and go on about my business. But if I never show her that I love her, it's going to go nowhere, is it not? Amen. Hey man, lots of people do bad things to other people and then tell them, oh, I'm sorry, I love you. You love me, right? And go on and keep doing the bad things. Yeah. They ain't showing you that they love you. That ain't love. That's, right. That's right. something yeah. altogether different. Yeah. But it sure ain't love. Hey Amen? It says we should love the Lord thy God Amen. with all our heart, yeah. with all our soul, yeah. and with all our might. Hey yeah. yeah. Amen. It's yeah. what it means to love. Means, Lord, I'm not just going to show up on Sunday and show up on Wednesday and maybe show up on prayer meeting and just walk around and say, Oh, I love you. And then I'm going to go back to life as usual as soon as I walk out the door. What that's saying is saying, No, this is a place we're going to come together and we're all going to love the Lord. We're all going to praise Him. We're all going to worship. But then I'm going to leave on my own walk going, Jesus, I love you. God, I want to live for you. Lord, I just want to read your word. I want to be. Corinthians 13th chapter speaks a little about love. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, that word there is love. And a lot of other translations don't replace that with love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity or love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So though I can stand up here and maybe preach and give you something to feel good and you can feel empowered and go home, 
but I don't love the Lord. It's nothing. It's just words. Amen. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, right? And have not love, I'm nothing. Amen. Amen. So all these signs and wonders that follow, oh man, Brother John, he must be just wow. Man, he must just wake up in his knees and, and just walk through the whole day on his knees, just praying, talking to God. But if I don't love him, it's nothing. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profited me nothing. Jesus. And then it starts talking about what it is. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunted not itself. Love's not puffed up. Amen. It does not behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not its own. Is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. That's what love is. Love is more than just saying, I love you. Love is saying in the good times, God, I love you. Lord, I don't know where my next paycheck's going to be. I love you, Jesus. And I don't know if my wife or my husband or whatever it may be is going to come home. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Love says it don't matter what I see. It don't matter what I feel. But God, I give it to you. God, I give you everything I have. Because I love you, Jesus. Love the truth. If we want to move faith from our heads to our hearts, we must fall in love with Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We can't just, Brother Rusty's preached on it lots of times. We can't just come looking for his hand. Right. That's right. right. A lot of us started that way. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Lives ruined. Let's still see what God wants to do, right? Yeah. What you got for me? Yeah. But you know what? He loves us so much, he gives it. Embraces and says, yeah, I'm glad you're here. Come here. Let me work on Let me show you what I can do. Amen? And he begins to bless. And he begins to take care of. And eventually, you had all your needs are met. And a lot of your wants are met too. Right? But then, it's easy to find yourself in the wrong spot. When you realize that love that it's talking about ain't quite what you got. Right? To fall in love with Jesus, we must know Him. Not superficially, but deeply. More than just, oh, I know Jesus. He's in there. But deeply. That kind of knowledge takes time. It takes persistence. Just like any good relationship. It takes work. Jesus invites us to abide in His love. He says, rest. Stay, Terry, hang out here a while. Don't rush past it. John 15 and 9, he says it. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy might be full. You need a little joy in your life? You're looking for a little peace? Amen? Why don't you fall in love with him? And he'll give it all to you. Every man that you need. Maybe you've been walking around in the deep dark depression. And if he's hanging over you saying, you're not going to be happy again. Why don't you stand up and say, Jesus, I love you. I will show you that I love you. I will give it all to you, Father God. Hallelujah. And just embrace that joy. Embrace that peace that He begins.
Didn't even need to go there. Philippians 3 and 10, Paul puts it a little bit like this. He says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Everything that Paul went through, you think, what is he talking about? You've seen the blind eyes open. You've been in prison and seen the doors open up and you come out dancing and singing. They've done all sorts of bad things to you, Paul. And you're still standing. You're still preaching. What's he talking about? He's saying, I can know him, but I want to know him. I want to love him, and I want him to love me. Every day that I wake up, I want him to be the first thing on my mind. I want to hear his voice say, good morning. Did you see him all right? Yes, Jesus, I I want to know him. I want to love him. Yeah. I want to give it all to him. Amen. That's all that matters. Hallelujah. <laughs> Proverbs 2, 1 through 5 says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, take it in, embrace it, right? Here, if you will. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, that word knowledge right there in Hebrew means understanding, insight, discernment, good sense, usually referring to the wisdom that responds to the Lord and his instruction, meaning revelation. Right? He says, yea, if thou criest after knowledge or revelation, God. Open my understanding up to who you are. How big and how great and how awesome you are. Open it up to how much you love, Lord, and make me like you. Hallelujah. If you do that, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, right? Not just saying, but really getting down. Lord, fill me up till I overflow, like that song says. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure. In other words, this be the most important and biggest thing of your life. God, I got to know you. I want to be with you on a different level, Jesus. I read story after story. All my, all my heroes through your word and the acts that you used them for and the things they witnessed. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, open me up and use me in that way. I want to be that close to you. I don't care if anybody ever knows who John Dumb is. I want him to know who John Dumb is. I want him to use me and have his role in my life because I love him with everything that I have. Hallelujah. 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 If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Or that, oh, that awesomeness. Because you begin to look and it, be it became number one in your life. Not my Facebook posts or my job. Or how much money I got in the bank. But him and what he wants. Amen. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of that revelation of God. This proverb reminds me of the Song of Solomon. I began looking through this. I read it multiple ways. The message is great, especially on that. It's eight chapters. I recommend it. But it opened my eyes up even more to his love. This is what I was searching when this study began to come across my heart. Was I wanted to know more about his love. Because I felt so inadequate. I began to read the Song of Solomon. It speaks of two lovers, a husband and a bride. Searching out, reaching out, and embracing one another. It's a metaphor for Jesus and his love for the church, his love for you, his love yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. And as I read it, 
I begin to understand. You see, the bride jumps out of the gate right off the bat in the first chapter and says, Look, it's been hard. To, it's been a hard time. I'm not the priest. You know, my family's ruined me. They made me do things, or the world, if you will, has done these things. And the husband immediately shuts that down and says, No. No, you're beautiful. You're the fairest among them all. Right. And it began to speak to me. Because oftentimes the enemy likes to use our past and remind us of how filthy we used to be and how in the world would someone like him ever look down and want someone like me? And he's saying, you're the priest. You're the one I want to be with forever. There's none like you. And he's saying that to each and every person. Amen. When you're down on yourself and you're down on your life, and you think you're never going to get it right, God, what good am I to you? He's saying, let me tell you. You're perfect. You're beautiful. I have plans for you. You just wait. You just keep coming. Just keep loving me and seeking my heart. And I'm going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love the truth. Love the truth. But with every up, there's a down. What happens if we don't love the truth or we stop. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8 through 12 says, And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. It's talking about the end time. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The Antichrist. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Here we go. Because they received not the love of the truth. Not just the truth. But the love. What we've been talking about. That they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. All right. All right. But wait, there's more. Yeah. Romans, the first chapter. I've used this many times because I've lived it several times. Paul begins to speak about backsliding. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. See, God's wrath is His attitude in relation to sin because sin damages. It perverts and it destroys each and every one of us. It goes on and says, For God hath showed it unto them. He's revealed it. This is it. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. It's saying we have revelation now. Yeah. Anything you want to know, seek it. <laughs> Being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. My God, my God. You want to know the truth? Seek it. It says right there, He will give it to you. Right. Without excuse. Right. Here we go. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Into birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. You see, it starts with a refusal or no interest in worshiping or being thankful to Him. It's not that important. I don't clap right here for this song. This one, you know, whatever. It's just song. Thank my jail. You know what? Uh, it's Wednesday. I know I got two hours to get ready for church, but I'm so tired. 
you know, I probably, you know, I worked a little late. I think I'm just gonna miss this service. It's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal. Or you know what? I really should read my word, but have you seen what's going on on Facebook right now? Man, I gotta get into this. Right? It becomes less important. Doesn't matter as much anymore. Because of this attitude, you begin to harbor vain or selfish thoughts. You begin to lose the light that you had. If you don't act on truth, you'll lose it. You refuse to walk in the light that Jesus possesses. That light's going to grow dim and it's going to be extinguished. Goes on and says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts right. to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. In other words, He ain't that important. This is more important, right? My baseball team is more important. Or my bowling league. Or the poker table we have every Saturday night. Or, you know, the drinks every now and again. Right? You see, God no longer restrained them by His divine grace. He allowed them the freedom that they demanded. Of course, this freedom to sin actually results in bondage, slavery, yeah. damnation. Yeah. In other words, God gave them up to the desires of their own heart. Yes. Right. I've been right there. I backslid. I was gone 12, 13 years. And, I mean, it started off bad. The whole time it was bad. But let me tell you when it really got bad. I had lost everything a few years in that mattered to me most. And I remember standing outside, it was nighttime. I was probably smoking a cigarette, did that all the time. I'm looking up into the sky and I had enough. I said, God, I hadn't talked to him in a while at this point. I said, everybody needs to stop praying for me. Because they're trying to get me to come to church. And that's probably why. All this has been removed, so I'll be broken and want to come home. But I'm not coming home. And I shook my fist in the sky. And I said, just leave me alone. Stay out of my way. Wow. Yeah. And he did. Wow. Wow. And from that moment afterwards, it had never been darker. Yeah. It had never been harder. Yeah. Never been tougher. I went down more roads and more back alleys and more nightmares than I ever imagined or could have even comprehended. Yeah. I found myself here. Oh. I was gone. The word goes on and says, For this cause God gave them up Amen. to vile affection. Yes. For even their women did change the natural use of that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, working with that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which is meat. This is when you don't love the truth. This happens. When we get rid of moral law, when just our morals don't even matter anymore. Yeah. I just do what I want to do. Right? Eventually, nothing seems wrong. Right. Right. Can you imagine right. if there's no right and no wrong? I mean, the world we live in right now is yeah. headed down a very dangerous road. Right. And it's very quite possible our whole country could be right there. Yeah. Right. It's already hard enough to say anything. Yeah. Right? Because I'm wrong either way. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, that was me. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness. 
fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliceness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable and merciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Yeah. Wow. I knew I was going to hell. I would tell everybody at the party, we're all going to hell. Because they one of them, it'd only take one of them to start talking about, yeah, man, when I'm going, we get to heaven, and I would shut that down. I was probably a party pooper in that sense. But I'd make sure we all knew. We were going to hell. There wasn't no parties going to be thrown, right? Reprobate. That word right there we use. A reprobate mind. Not standing the test. Unqualified. Worthless. In base. And just throws his hands up. What do you? By this time, any distinction between right or wrong is gone. You no longer believe what you're doing is wrong. Conviction is gone. Come on, man. That one thing you used to hear, that thing you used to feel when you were about to do something wrong or you knew something was wrong, you don't even feel that anymore. Yeah. There's nothing there to stop you. Yeah. Right? Once someone reaches this place where he loses the distinction between right and wrong, it's almost impossible to come to the conclusion on their own that I must repent and be saved. Right. It's right and wrong is gone. So there I was, shook my fist to the sky. It was dark and it was nasty for years, years after that. Towards the end, I remember I was driving over 100 miles an hour as fast as that. Mustang that I had for three months could take me. Headed towards Seagville in the river bottoms on a straightaway with tears in my eyes. I just ripped off my brother again. I robbed everybody in my family, you ask me. I just ripped him off again. I had tears in my eyes. I'm going as fast as that car could take me. I said, God, I hadn't talked to him since that night. I said, if you're real, if you still want anything to do with me, I'm asking you one last thing. Will you heal me or will you kill me? Because I'm tired of hurting everybody that cares about me. That did nothing wrong to deserve it. I still went on did what I was doing. But immediately after that, something began to happen. The phone lines... To my dealers, the ones that had me so super hooked on heroin, I couldn't reach anybody anymore. Yeah. I would go to their doors with cars in their driveway, knocking, knowing they're there, and wouldn't hear a peep, wouldn't hear a sound. Call on the phone, ring off the hook, couldn't get a hold of nobody. Jesus heard me in that car. You know, when I shook my fist, he backed up and said, okay. But he never stopped watching me. Amen. That's love. He loves me. He loves you. No matter where you're at or where you're going or what you're going through, He's just waiting on you to make that decision. To turn around and go, all right, Jesus. You love me that much. The least I can do is give you everything I have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We go to Mark 12. Jesus is speaking. It says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered. He took it all the way back. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind, with all of thy strength. This 
is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So Jesus said it right there. Number one, first and foremost, the first thing you need to know is love me. And I'm the only one. Right? And don't just tell me, but show me. Love me with all of your heart. All of your might and all of your strength. Because times are going to get tough. Things ain't always going to be a mountaintop adventure. Sometimes you're going to be climbing through the mud. And it's going to take everything that you've got. But if you love me, I'm going to get you through you see, for years, my faith was just on the surface, skin deep. I knew who Jesus was. I believed who he was, that he died for my sins. I chose to follow him. I studied the Bible, did my best to make good choices, but there's always something shallow about my faith. You know? Anybody else? Mm -hmm. But you see, everything changed when I started knowing Jesus as a real person. Yeah. Yeah. Not just someone to be studied. Not just someone I'm reading about. Right. You see, when I read about Jesus standing by a shamed woman, Daring the self-righteous to convict her, I imagine him doing that for me. And I loved him. When I read about Jesus that he stood at a well talking to a woman that everybody hated, everybody pushed aside, I pictured him talking to me. Despite what I'd done and what everybody knew me to be. And I loved him. When Jesus stopped and healed a woman who had enough faith to bust through the crowd and say, all I can do is just touch the hem of his garment. I pictured that was me. I knew that he'd stop for me. And I loved him. When Jesus endured false accusations and was betrayed by his friends, rejected by his own, was beaten and crucified, so that I could be free from the curse of sin. Come on. Yeah. I loved him more. Yeah. He became real to me, you see. More than just what I heard coming over a pulpit. More than just what I read or was taught in Sunday school. But I had an experience. Come on. Yeah. And I began to take that experience home. And I began to read and go, you've done that for me. You've done that for me, Jesus. He became even more real. And I really began to love him. Amen. Amen. Romans 5 and 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, dogs, filthy, run over, rot, no good for nothing, Christ died for us. He laid down to the cross. In that car, in that bus stand, with no hope, and no place to go. I'm going to do it for him, the one sitting in prison, the one with no chance. He did it for every single one of us here today. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful? Is that enough to make you love him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm of Solomon 8, 6 and 7 says, Set me as a seal upon thine heart. Yeah. Oh, what would be special. As a seal upon thine heart. For love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. 
If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be content. Many waters quench love, neither can the floods drown it. So no matter what, no matter how hard it gets, or how hot the fire is, he loves you. And he's worth your love to him. Amen. Amen. Yes. If he never touches me again, just from what you heard me say that I've experienced, is that not enough? Amen. That I owe him everything that I have? Amen. Yes. Oh, but he's done so much more. And he has so much more. Amen. Amen. That's his love. It's perfect. It's Amen. genuine. It doesn't fail. It doesn't get weak. It stays on the top. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 3, 14 through 19 says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, speaking of the Holy Ghost, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend. Here we go. So you got to be rooted and grounded in all love just to even have a shot at understanding this part, right? That, that, that all right? That ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints. Here we go. What is the breadth? Yeah. What is the length? The depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge beyond all understanding, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. So that tells me we have just scratched the surface. And you're not going to get any further until you are grounded in love and says, God, I don't care what happens tomorrow. I may feel like I'm left here all in all, but I know this. I love you. And I will never stop loving you. Hallelujah. Only then do you begin to understand his love and how big and how great he is. Hallelujah. And begin to be filled with all the fullness. I want all the fullness. Anybody else? Yeah. Crumbs off of the table. It ain't going to work all the time for me. I want the whole thing. You know, I pray all the time we come to church. God, have your way. Open up the windows and doors of heaven because I believe there is greater than we have ever even experienced. To come. Hallelujah. Come on. Come across this poem. I'm wrapping it up. Sister Beckham, if you'll help me out. I don't even know how long I've been on baby been too long. Good stuff. It's an old poem. Never heard of it before. And it come jumping across me during this study. It's called The Hound of Heaven. Written by Francis Thompson. I don't have the date, but it's old. That's all I know. And it's long, so I'm only going to read a piece of it. There's pages here. Right? I'm only going to read a piece of it to give you the point. It's called The Hound of Heaven. I fled him down the night's and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fled him, capital him, down the labyrinthine ways of my own mind. In the midst of tears, I hid from him and under running laughter. Up the state hopes I sped and shot precipitated the down titanic glooms and chasmed fears from those strong feet that followed, followed after. But with unhurried chase and unperturbed pace, deliberate speed, majestic instancy they beat, and a voice beat more instant than the feet. All things betray thee, 
who betrays me. And it goes on and it goes on. That, that's how I felt. I would run and run and run and run. But I could still hear it behind me every step of the way. Didn't matter how dark I brought it. Didn't matter any places that I would go. Mom can attest she's seen me in my lowest. And even there, I can hear him calling out to me that love. That love. Love the truth and sell it not. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on. We are told in Deuteronomy, Jesus confirmed it, that that's first. That's the most important thing here, O Israel. The Lord our God is one, and you should love the Lord with all of your heart. In a time like this, I found myself right here. Did I really love him? Was it just part of the show or part of the routine? And so I began to search if I wanted to find out because that verse echoed in my head about having the truth and loving it not. And so I began to study and read and it opened my heart and opened my eyes. I love him so much. I owe him everything that I have. Anything good in my life that I have become has been because of him. Because anything I would do just takes it down the dark path. That love. It's all sin. Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? Shall tribulations, anybody going through some of that? Or distress? Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sore? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And he says, for I am persuaded, life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, or things to come, right? Nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If he loves us that much, and that is true love, that love is action right there. He shows me every day, way more than just waking me up and saying, I love you, son. And I would take that. But he says, I love you. Let me show you something. Come here. Look what I got you. Look where we're going today. Look at how easy today was. Or, or yeah, even though it got hard, you can feel me, right? Yeah. Even when it was tough and you felt like giving up, you could feel my arm around you, right? Because I love you. Oh, that I may know him. You know. Y'all, we have to have a love for the truth. It has to be more than skin deep. We are in the very end. It's coming. It can happen right now. Yeah. And if we're not grounded, if this thing right here isn't the most important thing in my life and in my world, I'm going to be washed away. It's getting hard. It's getting tough. It's getting dark and gloomy. But, oh, that I may know Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah singers or whoever, if you would come. I wish somebody would step out tonight, be honest in their heart and their mind and say, yeah, Brother John, I'm with you. 